What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, and the stimulus check update. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below as it's completely free to do so. And remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also, thanks so much for hitting the like button for us down below. We have some major events that are happening here around the world that are going to affect us here in the United States uh, right now. Let's jump right in. Okay, first up, Russia has now gone into default. That's right. Uh, the S&P, the Standard & Poor, also uh, kind of associated uh, with the one of the largest and uh, most authoritative uh, global ratings agency, has officially placed Russia into their first, what they're calling, selective default. Yeah, so this is very, very major. This could be a way to potentially end the war as Russia is officially in their first default. Yeah, you can see here S&P Global places Russia in selective default. Russia was unable to use dollars held in American banks as America and the United States froze them, uh, billions of dollars held by Russia, uh, to make a payment of about $650 million on its debt. It used rubles instead to make that payment, but um, the creditors were not able to use those rubles and, and convert that to dollars, and uh, it is considered a default. It is considered a selective default now. Yeah, because basically <laughs> uh, rubles are actually somewhat considered, <laughs> uh, dare I say, useless in some parts of the world right now. <laughs> uh, I hate to say it, but uh, it, it's it's somewhat considered that because if you actually look at this, they made a payment in rubles, but the creditors couldn't use it. They couldn't convert it to, to dollars. And uh, yeah, the S&P Global Ratings Agency has now considered them in a selective default. Yeah. Yeah, you can see here Russia was unable to use dollars held in American banks because the money is frozen to make a payment of uh, about two thirds of a billion dollars and it used rubles instead. And S&P Global has placed Russia under a selective default rating after the Russian government said last week that it had repaid uh, this debt in rubles. But the rating agency said uh, late Friday that it didn't expect investors to be able to convert this money into U.S. dollars and that uh, this is now because they literally can't use the rubles, they can't even convert it to dollars, the money's almost essentially worthless. So it's actually considered a default. And you can see here pushing Russia towards its first default on foreign currency in more than a century. Yeah. The bonds do have a 30-day grace period, given the Russian government time to repay in dollars or find some other way to avoid a default. S&P Global said it didn't expect the government to convert the payments within the grace period. And you can see here on April 4th, uh, last week, a dollar-denominated Russian government bond matured and another coupon payment came due. That same day, the U.S. Treasury Department tightened its restrictions on Russian transactions in an effort to force Russia to choose between draining their dollar reserves it has on hands or using new revenue to avoid a defaulting on its debt. Uh, the U.S. Department blocked Russia from using dollars held in its American banks for its bond payments, and the transactions were not completed by J.P. Morgan. Subsequently, the Russian finance ministry said it paid the debt in rubles, and now that they're not able to be uh, transferred over to U.S. dollars. Uh, another ratings agency, Fitch, downgraded 
Russia to a grade of C. Uh, you can see here the Fitch Rating Agency says that a C rating reflects that a sovereign default is imminent. So multiple different ratings agencies says that um, even if Russia somehow skates by uh, with this payment, that uh, the inevitable is coming soon. So uh, this is just putting more and more pressure on Russia to end the war because it's just uh, hurting them financially more and more. Remember, the United States has said they're no longer going to buy Russian oil. The multiple different countries have said the same thing. Uh, gas and oil companies around the world are doing the same thing. There's been dozens of them, including some Chinese companies as well now. And the EU, multiple different um, EU uh, statements have said that they are also trying to wean off uh, Russian oil, gas, and energy because uh, there's multiple different kinds, coal, oil, natural gas as well, uh, by the end of this year and going forward. So energy is basically almost <laughs> the vast majority of Russia's income. So if you cut out their energy supply, their their rubles, you know, everything that uh, comes from producing, you know, oil, gas, natural, you know, energy, um, they're literally just going to start defaulting left and right on everything. So uh, this this is one way to stop the war. And even, the, check this out, you can see here, Russia is an energy powerhouse. The country accounts for 45% of the European Union's gas imports, according to the International en Energy Agency. But if the European Union stops buying their gas, imagine how much money they're going to lose. You can see here the EU is trying to wean itself off Russian energy. It's banning Russian coal and considering an oil embargo but hasn't mentioned a ban on natural gas yet. Germany, Europe's biggest economy, is particularly reliant on Russian gas. Russian President Vladimir Putin's former chief economic advisor recently told the BBC that the Russia war would end in Ukraine within a month or two if Western countries did impose a real embargo on oil and gas exports from Russia. So the more restraints they put on Russia, literally just uh, <laughs> siphoning their money away from Putin and Russia by the day, I mean, they have, according to the rating agencies, officially gone into a selective default. They might squeak by on this one, but literally they have bond payments due <laughs> pretty much every week. And um, it's only a matter of time. So we will see. And uh, next up, <laughs> things are not doing well in uh, multiple different parts of the world. Check this out. The U.S. State Department has ordered all non-emergency government staff in Shanghai in China to leave as the virus is surging there and they have tens of millions of people in lockdown there. And it's a full-blown lockdown like you're not allowed to leave your house at all or people are literally getting arrested and thrown into jail. Uh, it is so bad there. People are literally freak. Like I said, they're being thrown into jail. Uh, you can see some of these headlines here. Uh, Shanghai's lockdown resembles a horror movie as residents scream out from high-rise apartments. There's a video that's... Uh, literally trending and going viral here uh, in Shanghai. You're not going to believe this. Uh, take a take a view at this. Like I said, uh, this is literally out of a horror movie. 
here here's the video from Shanghai that somebody filmed and went viral. Check this out. Yes. Uh, yeah, so imagine if you live there, the entire city is on lockdown. It's uh, more than double the size of New York City. You're not allowed to leave your house. You have to wait on um, delivery of food. There's apparently millions of people that are on the verge of starving. Uh, they have drones going through the city that are saying, do not leave your home. And if you do, you may be arrested. It's, it's insane. People are just literally screaming out their window. Yeah, yeah I know. Imagine if that was going on here in the United States. Uh, I know freedom uh kind of kind of gives a different type of uh a different kind of toll, different kind of uh meaning here in the United States, doesn't it? Imagine uh imagine if you were in China or imagine if you were in Russia. Yeah. That's why I you know I I really like to show stuff like this because people don't realize Dare I say how how good we have it here in the United States? Whether you have a Republican president or a Democratic president, it's 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 really quite different <laughs> in many other places uh, around the world. I mean, I know we're dealing with a pandemic, I know we're dealing with inflation, but so is the whole rest of the world. Literally, you can you can see it. You can. A lot of, that's why I I I, I kind of like showing this stuff, not because it's fun, but because honestly, it it's kind of weird to say, but we actually have it a lot better than a lot of other places in the world, and it's kind of ironic, but um, yeah, it's uh, the land of the free is really not that bad. Let me know if you kind of catch my drift, but uh, could be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse. I don't know. Maybe I feel like it's it's Thanksgiving coming up instead of Easter. I don't know. Just kind of feel like, yeah, I just feel thankful after seeing something like that. It's just kind of gives me the shivers, gives me the willies. Yeah. I just could even imagine that. Could you even imagine living there and being in that? Can you imagine having children and living there and going through that? Like, imagine our lockdown with, that we had back in 2020. Our lockdown really wasn't a lockdown. It was just like, you can go anywhere, right? I mean, it was just like business, some businesses were closed, right? It wasn't like you couldn't leave your home. And a lot of people didn't leave their home if they didn't want to, right? Because honestly, when we had a lockdown, we really didn't know what we were working with. It was a virus. It was a brand new virus. It was kind of like when Ebola came over to the United States and people were deathly scared of it. And then all rightfully so, we have had almost a million people die from this virus. So, you know, take that for for what you think of it, but it's it's pretty deadly, you know. And again, I, I get that some people have completely different values and thoughts about this virus. Um, but I mean, if you were locked in your home and the government wouldn't let you leave, that's a different kind of, it's a different kind of, uh, it's a different kind of threat, right? It's a different kind of freedom is no longer there. Now, I don't I just, it's just it's, <laughs> words can't even ex explain it. Words can't even explain it.
yeah, you let me know your thoughts, but. You know, and honestly, thankfully, we have a lot of lawmakers here that we've passed three stimulus checks now. We've passed uh, monthly SNAP benefits. Extra SNAP benefits have been going out for over two years now to millions of people. Extra SNAP benefits. We've had rent assistance, mortgage assistance, utility assistance. Um, I've had literally thousands and thousands of people that have said, I've got rent assistance, I've got mortgage assistance, utility assistance. Um, think about three stimulus checks that we've gotten so far. Um, a lot of people got a paycheck protection programs. A lot of uh, small business owners got that, um, that helped employees get their paychecks. Uh, we had unemployment extra benefits go on for a lot of different months here. Um, think about all the different stimulus type of benefits that we had and some that are still going on. I mean, SNAP benefits are still going on here. Um, of course, we have the April 15th deadline that we really need to have extended here. That's really kind of a big uh, question mark going on right now um, that the president needs to extend to. We don't want it to end because everybody on SNAP benefits, everybody on Medicaid benefits could could lose, you know, those extra benefits. And uh, we don't want that to happen because a lot of people get extra money because of that. And uh, that's that's an extra stimulus benefit that still goes out right now. So that is, that is definitely one thing we don't want to add. And remember, they just extended the stimulus benefit, the, the student loan payments. They just extended that for four more months. So really, you got to kind of think that they've they've really done a lot. They had the child tax credits go out, that extra benefits for all last year. Of course, right now, they're still figuring out how to get it to go out for this year. But if you kind of really if you kind of really add up all the things that have gone out over from this pandemic and then kind of think about what's going on in some of these other countries. Yeah, imagine if you live there, they're. You think they've sent out three stimulus checks? You think they're giving SNAP benefits? You think they're giving rent assistance, mortgage assistance? No, they're they're literally trapped in their apartments. Uh, yeah, they're and they don't have freedom of speech like we do. You, you think they can't criticize their government? They they can't be a Republican or a Democrat and just uh, free speech? No, it's. Uh, <laughs> you, you 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 think you know over in Russia they criticize Putin? And you know what happens? They get arrested. That's what happened to the protesters in the street. It's just, uh, it's a different world. Different world. So uh, they're surely not handing out stimulus checks and, and rent assistance, mortgage assistance, utility assistance. Yeah. So, and and really we got states doing the same thing here now. Where, I mean, we got, uh, what was the latest state here? New Mexico uh, has now passed their state stimulus checks. Um Five hundred dollars. Let me. Yeah, five hundred dollars per person, or a thousand dollars. You can see here, New Mexico residents are one signature away. Just the governor. Uh, I'm not sure if he's if they've already if the governor's already signed it, but they're expected to. Um, from for the state to compensate for rising gas prices, um, they've already the state legislatures already approved this. Um, they're going to provide two $250 payments for single state residents, so a total of $500, who filed income tax payments, and two $500 payments for joint filers, so that's uh, $1,000. Two $500 payments for a total of $1,000. The bill passed by both the House and the Senate in a one-day special session uh, is now awaiting the signature of the governor. So let me know your thoughts. I will keep you up to date here with everything. And uh, I guess uh, land of the free it could be a lot worse. So uh, remember the new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to subscribe down below uh, to our YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, it's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And you can click over here to see how low and middle income can get up to $6,935 
uh, as well from the IRS. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.